Hi, awesome students. I wanted to touch base with you because I've noticed that a handful of you haven't quite gotten in the short story, or rather the questions and everything related to the short story, Harrison Bergeron. So what I'm gonna do in this video is talk about it just a little bit with, for you rather, that will sort of assist you and support you and, and maybe in terms of understanding the story, both in terms of the plot as well as like the major thematic concept of what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes going over the plot itself. I'm gonna do it very briefly and quickly, but then I'm gonna sort of delve into uh, one major thematic element, which is the role of government, and I'll talk about different sort of aspects of that. I'll keep the video no longer than 10 minutes. So without further ado, I'm gonna switch over to a PowerPoint with some information for you. And then I'll start talking about it. So let's make this sort of larger, if it will work for us, there we go. So we're talking about Harrison Bergeron, and of course the author is Kurt Vonnegut. So what's the plot? And let me apologize first for the wall of text. There's gonna be three slides that cover the plot, and it's just meant to hit the main ideas of what's going on here for you as a refresher. So it takes place in 2081, so we're talking about 60 years into the future, but it was written in the 1960s, and so really it's about 120 years into the future, right? And during this time, there's well over 100 amendments to our Constitution, and a handful of the important, most recent amendments basically outlaw any sort of inequality that takes place to the point where no one's allowed to be smarter or better looking or phys more physically able than another person. And so there's a law that says people who are better looking, you know, smart and so on and so forth than the average, whatever the average line is, which is set pretty low for us, uh, they have to wear handicaps. So if they're better looking, they have to wear masks. If they can think better than other people, then they have to wear sort of earphones that, that blast loud music or loud sounds into the ears, or if they're stronger or more dexterous, then they have to wear weights that sort of impede that strength or that agility that they might have there. And so the main character, or well, not really the main character, but the central character or the titular character is Harrison Bergeron. And he's like a Superman. He's super smart, he's super intelligent, he's super good looking. You know, he's like seven, seven and a half feet tall. And this is only when he's a teenager, he's about 14 years old, and he's taken from his parents, whose names are George and Hazel, and he's taken by the government. Now, George and Hazel are barely aware of this because George has a handicap, headphones that blast sound into his ears, and then Hazel is average, but like I said, average is low, 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 unfortunately. here. So the story revolves around the two of them, the parents, Hazel and George, watching television. They're watching a ballet specifically, and the ballet's awful. The ballerinas are wearing weights and masks and they're falling and they can't do things very well and they look hideous and grotesque and the musicians playing the music. Likewise, they're wearing handicaps with disable their ability to play music um, um, appropriately. And so they're watching this and then suddenly there's a break within the ballet where there's a newscast that takes place and it's announcing that Harrison Bergeron has escaped from jail or this government facility. And he's huge, you know, as I mentioned before, seven feet tall, he's got 300 pounds with a handicap on him. So that tells you because he's wearing such large handicaps among other things, that he's the Superman as we mentioned before. Now, for a moment, George recognizes Harrison, but because he's got this noise just blasting into his ears, he loses the thought quickly. And so what happens is as they're watching, suddenly Harrison storms into the TV studio that's recording the ballet. And when he comes in, he rips off all of his handicaps and says, I'm the emperor. And you know, those who follow me and help to free others to really elevate talents and things on that nature, they're gonna be my dukes and my earls. And you know, you, this one woman here, you know, these women who are dancing, if one of you will be with me, you can be my empress. And so one woman says, I will, and he rips off her handicaps and they dance, and they dance beautifully and magnificently to such an extent that Kurt Vonnegut says, you know, they kiss the ceiling, which of course is just overstatement here, right? And then suddenly in comes Diana Mugloppers, who is, the handicapper general, and she blasts them both, killing them both a 10 gauge shotgun. And then we sort of cut over to Hazel and George, and George hasn't been watching TV for a moment there, but Hazel was, and she's got tears running down her cheeks. 
And George says, what's the matter? She says, in essence, I don't remember. And then the story ends. So it's a strange story, right? But you can't take it literally because it's trying to say something. So what's it trying to say? Well, first, what type of story is? Well, it's a satirical story. It's a satire. When you look up the word satire in Google, this is a definition that comes up, and I think it's a pretty good definition. It says a satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, ridicule to expose or criticize people's stupidity or their vices. A vice means sort of things that, they, um, that they're addicted to, that they do all the time, that sort of idea. And particularly, it's criticizing all these things within the context of politics, contemporary, or topical issues. So clearly, the story is talking about topical issues or politics or its day. What are they? Broadly speaking, we can argue that's the role of government, or we can even just talk that maybe the idea of equality. But I'm going to keep the role of government since that's a nice, um, nice umbrella term, like it's a catch all. So, how does it criticize? Well, Vonnegut's warning against this overreach of, um, of impeding our own rights in the name of equality or the name of justice and mercy and all these different things here. He's saying you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. And during the 1960s, this was something that people were worried about. They were really worried about government overreach. Men were Vietnam War, among other things, were taking place. And so people were really concerned with that going on. And we still see that today. And this is one of the reasons why Vonnegut is still a popular writer today. The other thing that Vonnegut is warning us about as it relates to the role of government is that unhealthy relationship between government and citizen, right? There's a clash that's going on there. Again, the 1960s, Vietnam War, and the whole culture clash and the iconoclastics and everything but it, that's going on there. And this is considered to understand why he is saying it's like an us versus them and how the government is abusive to the people. And talking about abusive, we want, he's warning us about laws that are under this guise of being healthy to us, right? Or, or helping us on one, lo one level or another, but actually are abusive. And they push over, push against, or they step over, cross over the border of what we might consider more or ethical human boundaries. If you recall, when we read those pieces that revolved around 9-11, we talked about the idea that once 9-11 happened, the government sort of clamped down on a lot of freedoms that we had. And a lot of people were very willing to trade those freedoms away under the guise of safety. But there were lots of concerns that these laws were, and I use that phrase again, were abusive because they were impeding, because they were undermining freedoms that we had held for such a long time. And in fact, you're seeing that similar thing happen today with this pandemic, where you have people who are pushing up against the government that's saying you got to stay home or you can't, you know, be together. There's, you know, or social distancing is the mandate. And people are pushing against that saying, look, we understand that you're trying to protect us, but these laws are abusive because, again, they're pushing against our human rights and our, our freedoms to sort of do what we want and to interact with other individuals and so on and so forth. Now, on a really broad level, maybe the piece could be criticizing communism or socialism, this idea that the government does everything for its people. And at the very least, it might also be talking about, it meaning uh, Harrison Baradron, might also be talking about this danger of us being hypersensitive to other people's rights or feelings and how human achievement, individualistic development might be under fire here. So that's a very rough overview of Harris and Bergeron. I just wanted to give you a general idea of what's going on so to whet your appetite a little bit more and, and remind you also about the readings that you were supposed to do in the review work. And there were other documents that were available to sort of give you additional support. If you need more help, by all means, send me an email or log in during one of our uh, opportunity block times. You know what the times is. If you don't know the time, send me an email or go on Schoology and check the schedule. I hope to see you late, or you gentlemen rather, uh, on Monday during that opportunity block time so I can give you more support. In the meantime, be safe, and I'm, I, I look forward to seeing you guys by now.